Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. This week, we'll be celebrating the fantastic works of art inspired by the countries on the continent of Africa, and it just happens to also be Earth Week. So, our projects will combine African art and repurposing or reusing things that would normally be thrown away or recycled. I'm excited to see what amazing works of art we can create this week. We'll start with African masks. Hello, Cape Artists, and welcome back to another episode of The Heart of a Viking. In all the videos this week, we're traveling to Africa. But not only that, but it's also Earth Week. So that means that all of the art that we're creating is inspired by Africa, the countries in Africa, or maybe some African artists, but also we'll be repurposing and reusing some of the objects from around your house. Pretty cool. So today we're starting with African masks. Here in America, we often think of masks around Halloween time, but African masks are for ceremonial purposes, not for disguising your face. So let's start by learning a little bit of African mask history before diving into our own African mask project. A mask is a covering for the face or the head. In many cultures, masks are an important part of traditional rituals. For thousands of years, African people have used masks in ceremonies, and every African mask is unique. In many African groups, masks are worn by dancers. Masked dancers often participate in ceremonies that include songs and prayers. There are many types of masks in Africa. One type of mask covers the face. Another type looks like a helmet that covers the entire head. Still another is worn on top of the head. Each mask tells a different story. Shapes, colors, and sizes of African masks have special meanings for the different cultures. Masks that represent animals are popular. For example, the peoples in Burkina Faso make crocodile, eagle, and buffalo masks. Artists use various materials to make African masks. Sometimes there's leather, metal, fabric, and wood. They're the most common. Artists often decorate masks with paint, shells, glass, fibers, horns, and other items. So, let's gather some supplies to repurpose from around our houses to help create masks for our tribe. Okay, so as we've just learned, many of the African masks were created for a reason, some sort of tribal purpose or a reason within the group of people. So the reason that I'm creating my mask today is to promote happiness. So as you can kind of see, if you look around the nose, you can see a circle shape on both of these masks. That's the middle of a sun. And then all the lines are radiating out from that circle, creating a sun sort of shape. And there's nothing more happy to me than a bright sunny day. So I've also chosen red, yellow, and orange as my colors because those on a color wheel are the warm colors. And the warm colors absolutely always promote happiness. So let's see what supplies we're going to need to create this fantastic work of art. Alrighty, so for our 3D African mask, we're going to need a few supplies from around your house. You might see that the mask that I'm holding is made out of a cardboard tube. That's gonna be the first thing that we need. So kind of like the toilet paper size. Then we need a piece of scrap paper to do a practice drawing, a glue stick, a white crayon. It's important because we don't have white in many other supplies. And then some markers, a black marker, and then some colors that will go with the design that you're making. I had red, orange, and yellow. Also a pencil for drawing, some scissors, and some colorful paper if you happen to have it. If not, you can always color papers the color that you need. Okay, so first we're going to start by practice drawing what design we want on our tube. So I'm practicing drawing the shape first. I am trimming off the two different sides. And we're actually going to be eventually cutting those off, so I kind of scribbled them out. 
Then I'm going to practice drawing the details that I want to add to my African mask. Remember that I want you to have your African mask for a purpose. So my African mask's purpose is to promote happiness. So I'm creating a sun shape in the middle of my mask. So I did the eyes, nose, mouth like normal. Now I have some rays coming out from the sides. And next I'm going to add some repeating patterns in a symmetrical way across the surface of my masks. So if I have a dotted line pattern on the right side, I'm going to repeat that dotted line pattern on the left side. All right, so let's move to the cardboard tube now. So now I'm gonna start by flattening out my tube and drawing those first four lines on the four edges. Then use my scissors to cut off those edges. This should not cause your paper tube to fall apart. Instead, you should just end up creating four little scraps and something that stands up on its own. Perfect. So now we'll use some of our scraps to create the eyes, nose, and mouth. This will just give it a little bit of dimension, making it not so flat. Okay, so pick two of them that are about the same size to create the eyes on. So I'm drawing two eyes on two of the shapes. Cut out the eyes. and we'll glue those into place using our glue stick. All right, so now let's pick another one that looks kind of like a nose shape. We really just need a triangle for the nose. Not too much trimming at all, perfect. And glue it into place. And the mouth, we just need like a U shape. There we go, and glue that guy into place. Fantastic. All right, so now we're gonna use our pencil to draw the same design that was on our white piece of drawing paper. All right, time to add some color. So my color choices today fall in line with the colors that represent the warm family, which are typically the happier colors. So since my mask represents happiness, I decided to choose orange, red, and yellow as my main color choices. So you might find that because you're drawing on a brown cardboard tube that some of the colors that you were hoping to use don't come out exactly as you wanted. So for example, my yellow wasn't quite as bright yellow as I was hoping. It's because it was on a brown paper tube. So if that happens to you too, no big deal. We know what you were expecting and what you were trying to portray. So it's not a huge problem for me if it's not a huge problem for you. Now I'm going to use some black to outline and add emphasis. Anytime you use a black marker or crayon or colored pencil to trace something or to outline, you automatically create emphasis that draws the viewer's attention to what you are drawing. And since I don't have a white marker, I'm using a white crayon to color in some of the spaces as well. 
In addition, I'm also going to use my white crayon on top of some of my marker, which will lighten it and almost add, oh, like a highlighter sort of effect to it. All right, so now I'm going to work on the 3D sort of effect by creating some rays that are extending beyond the surface of the cardboard tube. So I'm grabbing my yellow paper, trimming off some strips of yellow, and I'll trim them down to the right size. It's completely up to you what you determine is the right size if you decide to do something like this. So whatever size you decide, mine are a little bit shorter than my thumb. Okay, so now I need to push that open, put some glue on the inside. It's a little tricky to do. And then put my little strips into the glue. If you find that your fingers are getting a little sticky, just rub them together or take a break and go wash your hands. My fingers were definitely getting sticky during this part. Well, there you have it, your 3D African mask made out of recycled stuff from around your house. So I hope you had a great time creating your mask, and I will see you back here next time at The Heart of a Viking. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it.